office of the New York Herald Tribune, a great news gathering center tied by direct wire to every major capital on the European continent. Into these offices early last year came a phone call that made one of the most shocking headlines of the day. This is the story of the man who tried to break through an iron wall of censorship to get the facts behind that headline. Budapest calling. Get to the New York office, Larry O'Connell. Put it on the amplifier. Go ahead, Budapest. This is Barker. Anderson's trial just finished. The sentence of 20 years at hard labor followed a verbal confession by Anderson in court. I'll give it to you in Anderson's own words. I speak of my own free will. My name is Robert Anderson. I am 52 years of age. I am an American. I am a spy. I'm being paid by the American government to spy on the Hungarian people's government. Barker, this is Nick. Did you get a chance to talk to Anderson? I was... Can't get by that monitor, Nick. They'll cut him off every time. I know. I can't help trying. Prime Minister Andreas Audi will be on the air at 8.30 tonight, Budapest time, to explain the Hungarian government's position on this trial. That's it for today. I speak of my own free will. Who do they think they're kidding? Mr. Strang, your New York call. Switch it to my office. And Biddle, locate Mrs. Anderson. She's somewhere in Paris. We've been trying to find her for two days. Well, keep on trying. Larry? Guilty. 20 years. His confession's on the teletype. Anderson's confession's coming in now. Get on it. Have you had a statement from the Hungarian embassy? No, it's too soon. Everybody in Europe's waiting to see which way Washington's going to jump. I want the reaction for my next edition, if possible. You'll get it. By the way, are you using Jimmy Race on this? I'm using everybody. Don't underestimate that boy, Nick. I don't. He's good, but he's hot-headed. Remember, he brought the communist story here, and he helped the FBI find Schultz. I'm deeply impressed. I'll tuck him in every night. Talk to you later. Who's going to cover the American embassy? I'll speak to the ambassador myself. Ambassadors come and go, but fashions go on forever. You can have exactly half that space, Sandy. I'd better send Dad to the Hungarian. I want Jean to cover there. Jean? But she's in Budapest. I ordered her back. Her plane arrives in 20 minutes. Um, call the airport and have her go there before she comes to the office. You could give her a chance to catch your breath. Catch your breath later. Why don't you send somebody else? Because I haven't anyone else whose hand has been kissed by the Hungarian ambassador. Mademoiselle Moray. Your office wants you to call immediately. Thank you.
personal friend of the ambassador's. If you take my name in, I'm sure he'll see me. I am sorry, mademoiselle. He can't see anyone. Excuse me. If I work on an American paper, perhaps you could tell me... I am sorry. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, please. It is useless to wait any longer. There will be no statement issued by the Hungarian ambassador at this time. That is all, gentlemen. Just a minute, friend. Anderson is still an American citizen. Don't you think you'd better give me some sort of statement? Our statement will be given in due time. Then you won't mind if I hang around and wait, will you? I must ask you to leave, Mr. Race. James Race. Why don't you go and tell the ambassador that I'm parking right here until I get some sort of statement? Mr. Race, yes. that's not the way we do things here. Don't we? This is supposed to be the embassy of a friendly government. They don't act very friendly, do they? I think you'd better leave. I'm just trying to stir them up and get some action. I'm afraid you've succeeded. Sit on. Vos papiers, s'il vous plaît. He wants to see your papers. Oh, sure. You'll have to tell him. I left him at the office. Il laisse à laisser à son bureau. Alors, il faut qu'il m'accompagne. You'll have to go with him. Would you be interested in a steady job doing this sort of thing for me? Suivez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Hey, wait a minute. You can't leave me now. You wanted action. You got it. Well, be a pal, will you, and call my editor for me? He's Nick Strang at the Herald Tribune. I'll see that he gets the news. One week, Nick. You could have let me stay in Budapest one more week. That's the point. I couldn't. I found I missed you too much. Besides, the Anderson trial's over. But, Nick, I was on the track of a really important story. If it was important, it was dangerous. And the front page story isn't worth your pretty neck to me. Don't you even want to know what it is about? Well, not right now. I haven't seen you in two months. Nick, this is a story as important as the Tito Stalin break. Does Barker know about it? Of course he does. Good. Nick, this is not the ordinary kind of a story. All right, what kind of story is it? What would you say if I told you that a short time ago, Audi was making a deal behind Russia's back to join up with Tito? <laughs> Rumors like that come out of the Balkans regularly on the half hour. But this is a rumor we may be able to prove. And if we could prove it, we might be able to help Anderson. Jean, I don't think I'm going to send you on any more assignments away from Paris. It's too nice having you around here. All right. I won't tell you about it. But if Reuters and AP should make you look like the worst fool in the newspaper business, don't come to me for sympathy. Now, about dinner tonight. Biddle said you were looking for me. Well, hello. Hello. A telephone call would have done. You didn't have to go to all this trouble for me. Well, to tell the truth, I'd forgotten all about you. How did you get out? Influence. You two know each other for hours. This young lady's been functioning as my interpreter. When was all this? The Hungarian embassy. I don't think Mr. Reyes realized that I work on this paper, too. On this one? Well, I'll have to renew my subscription. Reyes, what were you doing at the Hungarian embassy? Getting an interview with the ambassador. You got an interview with the ambassador? I didn't know that was a problem. The police ushered me in, and there he was. He made some nasty remarks about reporters, and I made some nasty remarks about Hungarian ambassadors, and the first thing you know, we had the makings of a pretty good story. I also have a few comments from Anderson's wife. Anderson's wife? How did you locate her? While I was talking to the ambassador, she called in to make a plea for her husband, and I found out where she was staying. Uh, what about her? She's quite a woman. No tears or hysterics. She's going to take... Don't tell me. Write it. Okay. And Jimmy. Yeah. Nice work. Thanks. How long has he been with us? The New York office sent him over about a month ago. According to Larry O'Connell, he is a one-man newspaper crusade. After watching him at the Hungarian embassy, I can't believe it. Hey, Sandy, what's the lowdown on the girl in Nick's office? I just made a bet with myself you'd ask that question. 
So you won your bet. Who is she? Jean Murray. Keep away from her. Who's asking me to? Nick Pint. Oh, one of those things. No, not one of those things, if your middle-class mind can comprehend such. Well, what then? Engaged? Listen, Race, you stay out of this. We're kind of fond of both of them around here. Well, who isn't? I think they're swell. Yeah. Hello, Papa. <laughs> ah, you brought the cakes. Good boy. Everything is all right? Fine, Papa. Your sister called. She wants you to meet her at the shop. You better go now. Grisha, coffee in the city room. Kiss your sister for me, huh? Bye, Papa. These files are a mess, Grisha. I have some time later. I'll, uh, I'll straighten them out. Sandy. Something wrong? You did all that with just soap and water? There ought to be a law. You and Nick doing the town tonight? We were going to have dinner, but um, I've been outranked by the American ambassador. I'd have to settle for cocktails. Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing the conversation just now, and I was... You couldn't help it. His ears grew two feet. As long as you've been stood up for dinner, how about me? I'm sorry. I'm an extremely graceful feeder. Hostesses fight over me. Husbands even ask me back. Thank you, no. I'm for a hot bath and then early to bed. You don't know how I missed hot water in deep tubs. Now, what about the two of us? Mr. Ace, um, are you taking up a collection for something? Goodbye, monsieur. Goodbye, monsieur. Thanks, monsieur. I won't be a second longer. Send Race in. You want me? Your blast at the Hungarian ambassador. You're going to have to tone it down. Tone it down? They gave Anderson 20 years on a frame-up. You want to play footsies with him? I don't get it. We haven't got the facts to back up your accusations. Neither did the Hungarian government have facts when they convicted Anderson. This is a newspaper, Jimmy, not an open forum in which to air your outraged sensibilities. We're still going to concentrate on facts. And why don't you send me to Budapest, where I can get them? When the time comes, I'll see that you get around. In the meantime, I suggest that you relax. I'm afraid I'm not built that way. Well, I can't remodel the paper to fit the way you're built. What about the interview with Mrs. Anderson? It was fine. Thanks. You look like a worker's revolution against the boss. Come on, Sandy. If you promise to listen, I'll buy. As long as you're buying. I may not believe in what you say, but I'll drink myself to death defending your right to say it. So the man wouldn't use your story. Is that any reason to write him off as an editor? No, it's not just my story. It's the whole atmosphere. Nick and his policy of dealing with a communist like little gentleman. If you ask me, I just don't think he's got it. Wait a minute. Now you're getting into a fight. Henry, two more. Doubled. Nick Strang didn't come up by the way of advice the love lawn, you know. He covered Dunkirk from the beach, a dozen revolutions. He was awarded the Legion of Honor, the Pulitzer Prize. When was all this? When the world was young? Before you could carry a newspaper, let alone work for one. Why, Nick Strang was a great newspaper man before you even finished high school. <laughs> this is fine. I'm buying the drinks and you're in his corner. How come you're such a great fan of his, anyway? Forget it. Just remember that he's had 15 years' experience over you. He's seen a lot of good reporters get their careers amputated by going off half-cocked. Maybe so. Maybe so, Sandy. Just the same, I get awfully tired of being polite. Well, I'll be seeing you. Tough, huh? It reminds me a little of Nick in the old days. Whatever happened between you and Nick? 
I always thought that someday maybe you and him, well... Please, Henry. A good bartender lets the customer cry in his own beer. Madame veut-elle me donner sa commande pour le dîner Je recommanderai spécialement à madame la truite saumonée. C'est une splendeur. Je ne comprends pas. C'est un poisson, madame. Un... The man said, would you like to order dinner? I understand him, although you don't seem to understand me. That's my newspaper training. They taught me never to give up. N'attendez pas. Mais et pour le dîner, madame C'est l'affaire de monsieur. Bonsoir. Oh, wait. What did she say Excusez-moi, madame, mais j'ai neuf tables qui m'attendent au restaurant. Je, je, je suis assez pressé. Je vous en prie, madame. Now, what did he say? He said that... What does it matter, Mr. Race? Good night. Bonsoir. Now, hold it. Ask him to wait one minute. Will you do that? Just that. Attendez une minute, s'il vous plaît. Bien, madame. Mais pas plus. Miss Murray, I feel like having dinner with somebody, and I wanted to be you. I tell me, is that against the French criminal code? <laughs> Mr. Race, thank you very much, but it's been a long day and... While you're getting dressed, I can be cooking dinner, and when we get there, it'll be all ready. No. No, I want to hear the broadcast from Budapest. We can hear that in your car. Besides... What am I going to do with this? Yes, sir? Serve le vin, s'il vous plaît. Very good, sir. Excusez-moi. <laughs> That's the only six words I know. This is Radio Budapest, with a special overseas broadcast to our English-speaking friends all over the world. The next voice you hear will be that of the Prime Minister, His Excellency, Andreas Ordi. I wish to make a brief statement concerning the light sentence of only 20 years given to the American spy Robert Anderson convicted of espionage and sabotage against the Hungarian People's Republic. I hereby warn the Western nations not to regard this leniency as a sign of weakness. They will come again, the spies, the prying saboteurs of warmongering capitalistic nations. But we shall fight their criminal intent to undermine Hungarian democratic principle with determination and fortitude. We shall be ready for the next one. We shall apprehend him, we shall try him, and we shall punish him as he deserves. The next American we convict of spying or sabotage against the Hungarian state, we shall hang. You have just heard a statement by his... I don't think it'll win them any converts, Mr. Ambassador. But what are we going to do about Anderson? He was arrested by a government we recognize. That obligates us to respect their laws and their courts. But even when a man is so obviously innocent... We're doing all we can, but this case is far more complicated than it appears to be. Oh, he's not a spy, but there has been talk that he was involved in the black market. Oh, uh, that is a complication. No, that's, that's not what he was tried for. No, but because of that, it makes it difficult for us to act as firmly as we'd like to. I imagine they'd release Anderson quickly enough in return for some trade concessions. Or stopping the Voice of America broadcast. That's precisely what's back of this. Anderson is a pawn in a much larger game. Unfortunately, that only makes it more difficult for us to help him. And I thought this was the one time we had a clear-cut issue on which to make a stand. Sorry, Nate. It's anything but clear-cut. Come on. Let's go into dinner. from the gentleman at the corner table. Thank you. Another member of the G. Moray fan club. You know how that is, Jim? In a word, no. Anton Borwitz, one of the most important men in the Hungarian government. Huh. I'm sure it won't hurt the champagne today. I wonder what he's doing in Paris. Why don't we invite him over to the table and ask him some questions? Like how they got Anderson to confess, for instance. 
If I thought he'd answer questions, I have a really important one to ask you. I have a feeling I'm being scooped. Come on, what goes? It isn't a story yet. I tried to tell Nick about it, but he wouldn't even listen. I'm not Nick. Shoot. Well, the story is that Prime Minister Ori of Hungary met with Tito to discuss an alliance against Russia. I see. A little double cross. Go ahead, Jean. What else? Well, according to the underground, a photograph was taken at that meeting. If Nick had made me come home, I, I might have gotten my hands on it. Isn't that kind of dangerous work for you? Well, for a man who is not Nick, you sound very much like him. There's no law that says I have to disagree with him in everything. I'm glad Nick made you come back to Paris. If you stayed in... Mr. Borovich. Please. Mademoiselle Moret, how nice to see you. I had no idea you were in Paris. I arrived this afternoon. Uh, may I present Mr. Race? How do you do? Thanks for the champagne. What brings you to Paris? Oh, I see a colleague. Mademoiselle, I was wondering if you could have dinner with me one night this week. Perhaps I can give you an answer to Mr. Race's question then. Tuesday? Tuesday is no good. Wednesday, perhaps. May I telephone you? Please do. However, if you can make it sooner, I am at the Creole. Good night. Good night. He seems a little anxious. It sounds as if he has a few questions he'd like to ask you. Shall we go? There's so much Borovitz in the air. Let's get away before it spoils our evening. Nothing changes Paris. Wars, people, times. Were you here during the war? Here, in the north, all over. In the underground? Mm-hmm. Have you killed a man? I've helped. Must have been pretty rugged. And you? What did you do during the war? Well, I jumped out of airplanes. Paratrooper? Yeah, North Africa, Italy. You've been through a lot. I got my basic training growing up on New York's east side. You get used to fighting. Your stories show it. I like them. What would you like to do tomorrow night? I'm afraid most of my evenings are taken. Oh. By Nick? Don't you think you'd better take me home, Jimmy? Okay. But you may as well know I intend to keep on trying. Cette soirée était merveilleuse. Which means? It's been very nice. Good night. You were able to make a thorough search of Mademoiselle Moret's apartment last night? Yes, I found nothing. But what about her purse? She might have concealed something in her purse. We searched all her belongings before she left Budapest. There was nothing. Could she have picked up something on her way to the airport? Not without my knowing it. I watched her constantly. Did anyone meet her when she arrived in Paris? No one. There was a message for her to call her office. That was the only contact she made. From the airport, she came directly here. I want to speak to Budapest. Get me Vyos from Prime Minister Ordi's office. Use the private line. Very well. You may return on the next plane. Hello. 
Hello, Bios. Yes? Borovich, you must be mistaken about Jean Moray. She took nothing out of the country. Did she attempt to contact anyone when she arrived in Paris? No. Let me speak to the men who followed her. But I told them to return. He sent him back. I'll take him. Borovich, already speaking. Yes, Your Excellency. We've just learned that Gabor Cheke is alive. But I thought... Never mind what you thought. Mademoiselle Moray was in touch with the underground and then left Budapest suddenly. That's why we had her followed. Then you believe she may have returned to Paris to contact Cheki? We cannot overlook any possibility. If she finds Cheki before we do, it could mean the end for all of us. You must not let her out of your sight. Yes, Your Excellency. Of course. Yes, sir. Send in France, Gaydor. Look at this photograph. It is Mademoiselle Jean Moray, a reporter on the Paris Herald. I want to know every move she makes, whom she meets, where she goes. This girl has been in touch with the underground in Budapest. She returned to Paris yesterday. And we believe she may be trying to contact Gabor Cheki. Cheki? But isn't he... No, Franz. We have reason to believe that he's not dead, that he may be here in Paris. Mademoiselle Moray may lead you to him. I understand. And France. This time, Cheki must not escape us. She hasn't come in yet. Oh, hi, Sandy. So we change your mood, hmm? That's right. Good morning. Morning, Grace. Morning, Sandy. Nick, I need five minutes right now. All right. Mr. Strang, Budapest calling. They want you. Hello, this is Mr. Strang. We'll see that he gets the best possible care. And keep me informed. Thanks. Dad, Barker was taken to the hospital. Heart attack. Get up a list of possible replacements and contact AP and Reuter. Uh, right away. Before you get snowed under, I need your okay on these. Big fashion opening week from Friday. You sure you'll get it back there in time? Good morning. No. All rested up? Wonderfully. Oh, Sandy. Very smart. Nice, hmm? I phoned you last night after I got through with the ambassador. There was no reply. I went to the Chosiness for dinner. Oh? With Mr. James Rafe, of all people. I forgot to call Pat, too. I'll pick these up later. How did that happen? Oh, he just suddenly appeared at my apartment. You seem to have made quite an impression on our young friend. Oh, please. Don't try to make me out of femme fatale. I'm just a hard-working newspaper woman and waiting for instructions. Have you any? Yes, I want you to go over to the United Nations. Eisenhower's going to be there. Anything else? And meet me at 4.30 sharp at Henry's Bar for cocktails. That's an order. Eisenhower and cocktails. Yes, sir. Can you give me a lift? Where are you going? United Nations building. Now, isn't that strange? So am I. I'm just going out to see General Eisenhower. Don't you think we ought to get started? It isn't possible you came to this decision after you saw the assignment sheet. Well, look, I've interviewed General Eisenhower many times. I just decided I'd renew an old acquaintance. What's wrong with that?
How about having a drink with me this afternoon? I have a date. What about dinner? Christian, are you and Nick in love with each other? You haven't answered me. Were you serious before when you said that you knew General Eisenhower? Well, I'm always serious. What about you and Nick? He's a wonderful man. Nick or Eisenhower? Did you meet him during the war? No, I interviewed him when he was at Columbia University. Are you in love with him? Nick or Eisenhower? <laughs> okay, we're even. Are you? Just because we had dinner, Jimmy, that doesn't give you any... I didn't more than have dinner with you last night. I fell in love with you. remember asking me about the war last night? Yes. It was, like you said, pretty rugged. I lost both my parents. Then the occupation, the underground. You get tired of emotional explosions. You look for something to believe in. You look for security. Security is like prosperity used to be, just around the corner. But that doesn't stop us from looking for it. Like you're looking for it in Nick. You didn't give him an answer when he asked you to marry him, did you? Now, Jimmy. Jimmy, it wouldn't be true if I said that last night meant nothing at all to me, but don't you? Please let me finish. There isn't anything else to say. That Jimmy race is all right. What did you do now? Went out with Jean. Got her a personal interview with Eisenhower. She phoned in quite a story. Did you want to see me? Our man Parker in Budapest is in the hospital. I need someone to take his place for a few weeks. I'm ready. Between the monitors and the sensors, you're going to feel as though you're working in a straitjacket. There are ways of getting the news, even in Budapest. Yes, but a word of caution. It's all right if you can get the news, but don't make it. When do I leave? As soon as you've been briefed. If you're sure you want the assignment. I'm sure. Good. We'll clear your visa through the Hungarian embassy. Regardless of the reason I'm getting this chance, thanks. You're getting the assignment because I think you're capable of handling it. That's all, Ray's. Okay. Yes, James Race. He has been with the girl constantly. If she knew anything about Gabor Cechi, she undoubtedly discussed it with him. Approve the visa. We will be expecting Mr. Race. But continue to watch that girl. Very well. Sandy, I just heard the news about Jimmy. Another old-fashioned Henry. Aren't you taking a kind of big for such a short acquaintance? He'll get into trouble, Sandy. Looks to me like he's been in and out of lots of trouble. But how could Nick do it? How could he send Jimmy to Budapest? I don't just... think Nick's personal feelings had anything to do with it. Well, that's what I keep telling myself, but somehow I... All right. Suppose he did want Jimmy away for a week or two. So it's his way of asking you to think it over calmly before you rush into something. That's so awful. And remember, I'm only supposing. Thanks, Sandy. Where are you going? Home. Don't you want your drink? No. What'll I tell Nick? He's coming over. Oh, just, just tell him I had a headache. But that's exactly why I am worried, because you're not afraid. If you were a little afraid, at least... I'm a big boy now. I'll manage. But, Jimmy, you can't behave there the way you did in the Hungarian embassy the other day. If you do... I got what I was after, didn't I? But that was in Paris, not Budapest. Look, Jean. We've thrown Anderson in jail for 20 years. 
Do you want me to forget that? Of course not. I only want you to realize how careful you have to be. Okay. I'll be nice and polite and obey all the rules. But you got information. How? From whom? I never knew any names. They'll get in touch with you, but you never know what side they are really on or whom to trust. Oh, I wish I hadn't told you about the Tito Ori meeting. Stop worrying, will you? No, but Timmy, don't you? You never let me finish anything I want to say. Well, I haven't got time. Even from the air, the once gay city of Budapest looked drab and grim to James Reyes. When he landed, he was told to report at once to the Minister of Justice. He did not know, of course, that Bayash was taking a special interest in him. That the eyes of the secret police were going to be on him constantly. That if he got in their way, the Hungarian authorities were ready to deprive him of his freedom, even his life. Yes? Minister Bayush, please. Your name? James Race, of the Herald Tribune. Uh, Race, how do you spell it? R-A-C-E. R-A-C-E. That's right. Mr. Race is here. Again. The minister is expecting you. Thank you. Mr. Reis, you got my message. I'm delighted to welcome you to Budapest. Thank you. Be seated, please. I've been most anxious to meet you. I didn't even have time to unpack. I think you'll find my papers are all in order. Mr. Reis, we only wanted to assure you of our complete cooperation. Oh, that's fine. You see, it isn't often that we get to entertain one of our critics personally. And we feel that this may be one of the reasons behind the misunderstandings between our peoples. Could be. Now you have the chance to report the truth. That's what I had in mind. What can we do to help you? Let me go anywhere I want and talk to anyone I please. But you don't need my permission for that. All right. When can I talk to Anderson? Unfortunately, he's already been sent to a work camp. It might be arranged at a later date. The sooner the better. Of course. It's been very nice, Mr. Race. We'll have dinner as soon as you're set. Yes, I'll be looking forward to it. Careful, Mr. Reyes. I wouldn't make any changes now. I always rewrite my stuff right up to press time. But the monitors will be listening to you. If you don't follow the copy you send them, they'll shut you off. We wouldn't want that to happen, would we? Mr. Barker was never able to change a single word. May I see Mr. Barker? Barker's in the hospital. I'm taking his place. Can I help you? No. No, thank you. Hello? Oh, just a minute. Oh, Mr. Race, here's your car. Hello? Ready with your call to Paris. We'll please it here to the approved copy. Go ahead. I've got a little story about the Russian-Hungarian military conference that was originally scheduled for Budapest, but is now switched to a little town on the Yugoslav border. The Hungarians are on maneuvers there, and it gives them a chance to show off their army to all their neighbors. So next week's conference promises to be an important one, with the arrival of the new Russian general. Have you seen Barker yet? No, he's still too sick. So until tomorrow at 3. Oh, and say, tell our friend Jean that here in Budapest, America wakes up every morning thinking of her. These added words, America waking up, 
These little things can happen, sir. I'd say that he has a girl in his office. How much do you miss story? Very good. He sends you his regards. But you must adhere to the approved copy. These are simply personal messages. We can't make any exceptions. I'm sure you understand. Now, uh, Mr. Race, are you enjoying your stay? Very much, except for one thing. I don't like being followed. Hold on. You must be mistaken. I don't think I am. Oh, I see what you mean. We've had you guard at the time. Against what? Some of our people have been very bitter against the Americans since the Anderson trial. We have just been trying to avoid an incident. I haven't felt in any danger from your people. Thank you for coming over, Mr. Race. Now, oh, Mr. Voyage, I'd still like to have that talk with Anderson. We haven't forgotten. Any message for me? The hospital called. You cannot see Mr. Backer today. Try them again tomorrow. Yes, sir. Please, you can tell me how Mr. Barker is. I haven't been able to see him yet. Thank you. I am a dealer in antiques. Would you give him this with my compliments? My card. Yes. I'll see that he gets it. It's race calling in. Put it on the amplifier. Also, tape it for Nick. Go ahead, Race. Here's a story illustrating the genuinely fine things being done for the Hungarian people by their government. Directly on the outskirts of Budapest, they're building a beautiful village, a lot like Arlington in Washington or Forest Lawn in California. The project provides modern housing for the workers and will be available to the people for surprisingly low rents. I was out there yesterday and was amazed at the beauty of the locale. It looks like it's straight out of the wonderland of those very famous children's stories. That's it for today. Jimmy's story sounds like a lot of double talk. Mr. Reyes, you are expected at the hospital now to see Mr. Barker. Yeah, I'm on my way. Well, I'm James Reyes. Hello, Barker. I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm not, but I wanted to see you. I'm leaving for Paris late tonight. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I'll get on with what I have to say. Nick seems to feel we've been neglecting the picture side of the news since Jean Moray left. I haven't been neglecting the picture side. It's just that I got sick. Perhaps you can do better. I'd like to try. Fine. Are you settled yet? Well, you know how it is in a strange city. Well, there are some good restaurants. Nurse, which would you say is the best? The Volga Tea Room or the Hungaria Hotel Roof? Both very good. He's right. Food's no problem. My trouble was always with cleaners. There's one right across from the hospital here. I tried them. Too slow. Fastest one I've found was a tailor named Laszlo Borish. I'll look him up. Tell him I sent you. You'll get personal attention. Thanks. I'll run along now. I'll be back tonight to say goodbye.
napot kívánok, hogy miért szolgálhatok? I'm sorry. I'm an American. I only speak English. I understand you. You Laszlo Boros? Yes. I'm James Race of the Herald Tribune. Yes. Mr. Barker suggested I bring my cleaning here. I understand he's been ill. Yes, he's going home for a rest. He's leaving for Paris tonight. Do you have something you want cleaned? I'd like to have this suit pressed. I will have it ready in a few hours. Good. It looks like it's straight out of the wonderland of those very famous children's stories. That's it for today. Arlington and Forest Lawn are cemeteries. That's obvious enough. But what possible connection can they have with children's stories? Grisha, do you know any Hungarian children's stories? Uh, stories by uh, Bartoki. Let's see, there's Peter Pan. James M. Barry. Alice in Wonderland. Lewis Carroll. The Little Match Girl. Hans Christian Andersen. Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Anderson. Cemeteries. Of course. Addison's dead. That's it. Are we going to run it? Certainly we're going to run it. Nick, Tim may get into trouble. If he hadn't wanted us to use it, Jean, he wouldn't have sent it.
nothing. He tried to get rid of you for a reason. He must have gotten something from the tailor. He wasn't out of our sight for more than ten minutes, Excellency. And the tailor was picked up at once. We've only begun with Mr. Race. My car. You can't come in here. It's okay. I spoke to the doctor. But he left orders that Mr. Barker was not to be awakened. That's all right, miss. I must. I'll do all the talking, Barker. I've taken care of our picture coverage. I want you to be sure and give my regards to Ness. Please, get the doctor. Get the doctor, please. Well, hurry. Call him. Go ahead, get the doctor. Did you get it? Yeah. Where's your passport? In my trip. Prepare for oxygen. How is he? You better wait outside. Mr. Race, I was hoping I would find you here. Is everything all right, Doctor? Just a spasm. Get me 100 milligrams of Demerol. You will be able to leave tonight? Of course, Excellency. Come with me, Mr. Race. All right, search the room. What is this? You will remain quiet, please. Just a minute. Mr. Race, I wouldn't interfere. This man is very sick. He'll be searched nevertheless. I'm getting in touch with the American army. You're getting in touch with more. You're under arrest. Who else was involved besides you and the tailor? Nobody, Mr. Vyosh. Me, I'm the lone wolf type. Mr. Race, don't you think your humor is somewhat out of place? I don't know. I think this place could use a couple of laughs. What was in the lining of this coat? Not that again. He's here? Again. We'll continue later. Yes, Excellency? This is your signature, Vaj. Yes. You read this story before you approved it. I have checked all of Race's material personally, Excellency. You read this and saw nothing wrong with it. Idiot. Don't you know that Arlington and Forest Lawn are cemeteries? Can't you see that this is an announcement of Anderson's death? But, Excellency... This race has made a fool of you, has made a fool of all of us. I have made every effort, Excellency. To do what? Organize a disaster? You've blundered from one thing to another. But a tailor... How could you let such a thing happen? You finally trapped their underground contact and he commits suicide under your nose. We are investigating, Excellency. Did you also investigate Barker's mind before you let him leave the country? How do you know what Ray said to Barker? You might have learned something about checking. But they were alone only for a few seconds. All that was needed was a few seconds. I will see to you that Barker doesn't reach Paris alive. I've already taken care of that. And now about Mr. Race. I want to interview him on the radio tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? But we have had no time to work with him, to prepare him. That's exactly why it must be tomorrow night. I'm going to put an end to the accusation that we drug and torture prisoners in order to get confessions. But how, Excellency? I want you to get several radio technicians. Men you can trust. Dependable men. Yes, Excellency. Go ahead, Budapest. This is the Ministry of Information. We have been instructed to inform you that James Race is under arrest and is being held for trial. The details of the arrest will be made known in a special broadcast at 8.30 tonight. Prime Minister Andreas Ordi will interview Mr. Race. Give to the American ambassador. Fiddle. 
Put in a call to Larry O'Connell in New York, and then go over to the Hungarian embassy and tell them that... I'll know what to tell them. Nick, Audi, Audi himself. That can mean only one thing. I'll get him out, Jean. I promise you that. I'll get him out. Biddle just told me about race. Where's Barker? Didn't he come in? Yeah, dead. Heart attack, they said. I don't like it, Nick. He had nothing with him, no clothes, no luggage. Nothing but this. Why should they hold his belongings? They were afraid he was taking something out. Something that involves Jimmy. I've got the American ambassador, Mr. Strang. Give me AP and Reuters. Find out if they've heard anything. Come on, we need a drink. We'll need more than one before 8.30. What is it with you guys? You keep me up for 30 hours, now you start asking me a bunch of simple-minded questions. If you please, Mr. Reese. What was your purpose in coming to Budapest? I came here to replace the Tribune correspondent. And your job was to get information for stories? Yes, I was supposed to get information for stories. That's what a newspaper man is supposed to do, isn't it? Coffee? I don't like the way your coffee tastes. We won't keep you much longer, Mr. Race. Just a few more questions. You said you were a paratrooper during the war. Yes, I was a paratrooper during the war. And what kind of work were you assigned to do? I was assigned to do reconnaissance on military installations and communications. Look, I have nothing to confess. I'm not going to say I came here to act as a spy, so lay off. Let me hear that line again. Nothing to confess. I'm not going to say I came here to act as a spy. I want to use, I came here to act as a spy. I'm not going to say. I confess, I came here to act as a spy. Those two speeches must be tied closer together so they sound like a single answer. We are finishing with race, Excellency. We will be ready to record your questions in about an hour. Oh. This whole idea is brilliant, Excellency. Thank you. I confess, I came here to act as a spy. Oh, very good. This is Radio Budapest. We bring you a special broadcast in connection with the arrest of James Race, American newspaper man. His Excellency, Prime Minister Andreas Ordi. I'm on the radio tonight in anticipation of the storm of protest which, from past experience, I know will come as the result of the arrest of James Race. We will be accused of falsifying facts, of making groundless charges. However, to refute all this, Mr. Race, who was arrested only yesterday, is here at the microphone with me and is free to say whatever he wishes. Mr. Race, will you please identify yourself? My name is James Race. I'm a newspaper man. Will you tell us why you came to Budapest? to replace the Tribune correspondent. Mr. Rice, what was your real purpose in coming here? To get information, to do reconnaissance on military installations and communications. Why were you chosen for this job, Mr. Rice? I was a paratrooper during the war and trained for this kind of work. In other words, you came here to act as a spy. I confess, I came here to act as a spy. You realize the gravity of the charge you're making against yourself. I do. It is not our purpose to conduct a trial on the radio. We wished only to present the truth. He won't get yes, away with it. Mr. Do you hear me? He won't get away with it. It is expected that the Ministry of Justice will demand the death penalty. The arrest of Mr. Race as a spy is the second incident of its kind to take place within the past four months. Now, how much time do you need? Not long. 
Mr. Reyes doesn't care for our coffee, but he has to eat. I have seen to it that his food is properly prepared. You haven't eaten very much, Mr. Reyes. You spoil my appetite. Any hidden microphones today, Vayush? As long as you won't eat, shall we get on? Am I right, Mr. Race, when I say that you came here as a spy? You had my confession on the radio. What more do you want? There's still the trial. Who do you think you're kidding? All you want to do is break me down so I'll say what you want me to say. You're quite mistaken. All we're trying to do is to help you remember the truth. Even the cigarettes, Vyosh? You'd feel better if you ate something, Mr. Race. Mr. Barker in the fire. Thanks, Grisha. Jean. Yes? Jean, this piece you did on Barker, it's not what I want. I know we've been running stories on him all week, but we must keep hitting the important points. Why did they hold Barker's belongings? Now, put some fire into it. Pound at it. Why did they keep Barker's things? Why did they arrest Jimmy? Why are they going to hang him? I can't write it. Get somebody else. All right, Nick. I'll have another try at it. Get a burr for this passport photo. I'll want to run it with the story. Biddle, get me the London coverage on Jimmy Race. <laughs> what they were looking for in Barker's belongings. It was rather the passport photo. Grisha, get a projector up to my office at once. That's Byers, the Minister of Justice. The one next to Tito, the man with the cigarette, is Borovic. That's the picture of the tito ori meeting. Proof, Ordi was making a deal behind Russia's back. All right, Dad, cut it. We run this picture, we'll hang Ordi, Borovich, and Bayosh. Ordi would give anything to keep his meeting with Tito a secret. Anything at all. I think we know what we want in exchange. Rush some prints through and put that film in the vault. Call Borovich and tell him we're coming over to see him. Quite a change to see one of them squirm. I don't understand, Mr. Strang. Why do you come to me with this story of a so-called Tito or D meeting? Because you are one of the plotters, Mr. Borovich. Oh. Yes, and unless you release James Race, I'm going to print that story. It is your paper. I presume you are free to print any rumors you like. What if we printed proof of this, this rumor? Proof? Yes. What proof could you possibly have, Mademoiselle Moret? 
How does one go about proving such a story? Very interesting. An excellent likeness of Marshal Tito. I'm glad you think so. Now, shall we discuss Mr. Race's release? But you know as well as I, photographs can be faked. And you know as well as I do that this is not. Personally, I don't recall the occasion on which such a photograph was taken. If I run it on the front page, perhaps the Russians will help you remember. Mr. Strang, your photograph shows what? A deal being made? I do not think so. All it shows is four friendly men. And you seem to have forgotten there was a time when we were all friendly with Tito. Anything else? Well, since you have nothing to add. Good night. Oh, you forgot your picture. We have others. Prime Minister Rodney, use the private line. We'll stop at the American Embassy. I want the ambassador in on this. I don't understand it, Nick. When Borwich saw the photograph, he was worried. And then? Yes, there must be something else. If we could prove that the photograph was taken when Stalin and Tito were no longer friendly. Nick, drop me at the office. Where's Nick? At the American Embassy. He'll be here later. Jean. International news just sent through a dispatch from Budapest. Jimmy goes on trial day after tomorrow. I had to check something in the file. I was going out for a bite, but I could stick around. Thanks. Be back later, Grisha. to save Jimmy Race, go to 10 Rue de Gaulle. A girl will meet you there. What girl? My daughter. She will give you something. Bring it back here. But no one must know. But Grisha, I, I don't understand. Please, not now. There is no time. I will telephone her and tell her that you are coming. Ten Rue de Gaulle. Mademoiselle Moray? Yes? This way, please.
I want to see your father, Gogo. Where is he? I don't know. We don't want to harm you. But you must tell us where he is. I don't know. I don't know where he is. Gogo, you think you could bear to see your brother killed? I don't know where he is. <laughs> You're not in Budapest now. Geography can be a state of mind. Right now, we're very close to Budapest. Suppose you tell us where Gabor Cechi is. You tell us where your father is. No. I don't know where he is. I don't know. Wait. Don't. I know where he is. Please don't. Believe me, Gogo, we've got to. But they'll kill him. Telephone him. Gobber Checky? Checky, this is Jean Moray. Tell him to come here at once. Alone. Come to Gobber's apartment at once. Alone. Franz. I know. I didn't want to. I didn't. I know, I know. You waited a long time, Gabor. Grisha, I... It was the only thing to do. What you did was right. But my children, nothing will happen to them. I suggest you make no outcry.
could I have done? I was desperate. You must remember, I was Ordi's confidential aide. It was I who drew up this agreement for Ordi and Tito. You think Ordi would let me leave Hungary with this knowledge? You ask me, Mr. Strang, why I did not tell you who I was, why I did not come to you before. Two years ago, the underground helped me to escape. I fled all over Europe, traveling by night, running from all the secret police. For two years, my children and I lived like hunted animals. I escaped them finally, and when I learned that Ordi believed that I was dead, I came to Paris. I came to Paris, and I permitted myself to hope again. I thought, well, now perhaps if, if I could find some way to get to America. I'll see to it that you all get visas. You'll go to America. There is no sanctuary anywhere on Earth for a man like me. Stalin reached all the way from Moscow to Mexico to find Trotsky. I have only one wish. I want my children to be safe. I want them to go to America. Let me tell you something else, Mr. Strang. You are mistaken if you think that this will save James' race. Ordi wants me, too. The one man who could inform against him and whom the Kremlin would believe. I will go back to Hungary in exchange for James' race. But, Grisha, I can't send one man to his death to save another. If it was that man's wish, and if his, if his life was the only thing he had left to give to those that he loves most, I think you could. Anyway, this is my decision. Get Mr. Borovich at the Hungarian embassy. When you speak with him, you must make sure that the exchange be made at a neutral border. I know them well. No sign yet, sir. They're late. No sign of them. Grisha, your children will soon be safe in America. That's it. Now wait here. Nick. I think it would be better. You're Nicholas Strang? Yes. Mr. Ordi? At your service. We agreed to come unarmed. My personal bodyguard. The American Embassy was worried about me, too. You have Gabor Cechi with you. All right, Colonel. Quite the same, Excellency. 
Will you now produce Mr. Race, please? Jose Bay, Jose America. Jose Bay, Jose America. What have you done to this man? Well, he's retired from the trip, perhaps. I'm a doctor. This man is suffering from more than fatigue. You're free to make your own diagnosis. Nice work, Mr. Ordy. Jimmy. One other thing. Yeah, boy? Just a minute, Mr. Audi. There's one more condition attached to this exchange. The status of Garbo checking. That is not part of the agreement. Neither is sending this man to his death. I only agreed to deliver him. Don't let anything happen to Gabor Cechi, Mr. Rodi. Not unless you want me to print that story. This is blackmail. Paper man behind the Iron Curtain. A story out of the headlines of today, part of the headlines of tomorrow.